testing, testing. Good morning, everyone. As you're coming in, we just ask that you go ahead, uh, prepare your hearts for worship. This time of worship through music and then worship through message. I ask that you stand with us uh, as we get started here this morning. Set your rule and pray.
you to turn to your neighbor. I want you to ask them, how has God been good to you? Respond. It is good to reflect on the goodness of God. Is it not? God is good. So today is the last official day of the Come and See series, and uh, we are privileged to hear from Tacoa Life. Uh, before I bring them on stage, I just wanted to highlight a couple things. First of all, this is the last week for men's and women's soccer. This week, so their final game is on Saturday for both the men's and women's team versus Regent University. So 12 p.m. for the women's team, 2 p.m. for the men's team. Uh, come on out and support them. It's the last chance you get. Men's basketball team had a huge win last night. It's here for men's basketball. Woo! Women's basketball has their first game on Saturday. Unfortunately, it overlaps with the men's team. It's also at 2 p.m. Uh, versus Bernal University, so you have to pick between the two. Um, but the Saturday, there's something for everybody. So come on out and support your teams. They represent you. They need your encouragement. And uh, we just... We just want to see more supports and more excitement with athletics this semester. Um, so uh, our speaker, our featured speaker this morning is Mr. William Brothers. Um, he is representing Tacoa Life. William and his wife Amanda have been running Tacoa Life for five years. Tacoa Life has actually uh, been around since 1980 um, and uh, they are just really ramping up in the last couple years. Uh, when William and Amanda took over, they originally started part-time and uh, they worked separate jobs to just pay and finance everything going on and pay the bills. But now Tacoa Life has developed into a full-time, fully funded community resource. William and Amanda, they are passionate about families in need in Tacoa, about women in need in Tacoa, and in the neighboring communities as well. And they're really providing for these communities in a very tangible way that has a huge impact on people's lives. So we are very privileged to have Tacoa Life here. Make sure you check them out. They got a booth in the lobby. See what they're all about. And uh, with that, please welcome William Brothers to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited that I, I usually don't get nervous. Um, I talk a lot, I love to talk. And he told me I could have 25 minutes and I thought I can do 25 minutes um, pretty much to the T because that's all anybody ever gives me is 25 minutes. So I'm pretty much used to that. Um, last night, the Lord started telling me a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And I said, Lord, I don't know if I can do that in 25 minutes. And he'd give me a little bit more, and he said, well, it's worse than just 25 minutes. He said, they're only going to pay attention to you for about 10. And he said, and of the ones that pay attention to you for 10 minutes, 50% of those are only there because their parents are going to get fined if they don't go to chapel. So that, I know that because my daughter went to school here. Um, so, look, I know where you're at. I know I only got you for a little bit, but I'm going to try to share with you what's going on in school life. Um, to start out with, I want to give you an overview of what our ministry does. And then I want to speak to you about uh, what I feel like the Lord's laid on my heart for Tacoa Falls and for you guys. Which um, I'm so honored to stand before you because I, I see the future. I see the future of our nation. Um, the hope. The hope in ministry. The hope in missions. Nurses. Doctors. Um, I've seen so many great things. Great friends come out of Tacoa Falls. I've got a dear friend that lived with us homeless and came to the Coa Falls and now is a doctor in South Florida and he started out homeless, uh, well actually a drug addict and then homeless and then, then comes to the Coa Falls. And so I've seen wonderful things come from folks at this school who, who's completely sold out and said I want to follow what the Lord has for my life. Tacoa Falls, I mean Tacoa Life is a very interesting ministry. It is a ministry of emotional roller coaster almost day in and day out. Um, we have everything that you can imagine within a family dynamic comes to see us, as well as everything uh, from a broken home we see. Um, a normal day may be a couple coming in that is married and rejoicing over a pregnancy test, and they just want to be the best parents they can be. And we offer classes to help them do so and work with them 
Um, right behind that couple may be someone in our ultrasound room laughing at the baby's fingers and toes and seeing the beauty of life that God's created. While across the hall we may be crying with a couple who's been with us for nine months and has now miscarried and they don't know how to process that the baby that they prepared for is now gone. Um, what I'm telling you is line for line what actually happened one day at the scene. Um, while you're crying with that couple, you'll have a mom coming down the sidewalk with her 15-year-old daughter that's pregnant and they're trying to figure out how to tell the father of the baby and the little girl's father that she's now pregnant and how they're going to navigate that. So we work with those ladies to understand that they can parent and we can walk with you and it's okay. You made a mistake. It's not the end of your future and the baby is not the sin. The sin was an action that took place, but this baby is a gift from God and we will walk with you and we will make the best out of this situation. Um, then while you're dealing with all these folks and you're trying your best to love on them, you'll get a phone call from a lady that says, hey, I'm pregnant and if I don't abort, my partner's gonna walk out on me, he's already told me. If he does, can you help me with housing? Can you help me to raise the child and help me to figure out what to do once I'm alone? Um, our, our answer to that is yes, we can and we do. But followed by that, we'll get a call from someone who's already decided not to abort, but their partner's found out and then the partner's calling us to threaten us because we changed the lady's mind and all he sees is 18 years of child support. This person that she once thought loved her, used her, and now it's threatening her if she don't kill her child. So we have to be there for that moment to love on them and walk with them through that. So it's not always, it's not always easy, and it's not always um, the broken families. Sometimes, like I say, it's a complete family. It's a married couple. They're just trying to do the best that they can. We've got some wonderful, some of the best moms that I've ever known come to the Coal Life. Some of them are single, some of them are married. I have a lot of single dads that come. I also have dads that come and take <coughs> lessons with me to be a better father, to be a more godly husband, and that type of thing. Um, a lot of times we get a lot of questions um, about how far we go with families. Um, and like I said, we've only been, um, as he said, we've only been directors for five years. So the ministry started in 80 on the, uh, in the mid 80s, I think, actually, on the hills of Roe v. Wade. Um, when, we, when the people, the founders actually saw that there was a major problem in our community and the people that couldn't um, get out of town to get abortions was, was having abortions in a very dangerous way and they wanted to stop that, to stop that by saying, hey, we can help you raise this child, we can also help you find someone to adopt the child. So that's another thing we do. We work very closely with adoption agencies. We have three Christian adoption agencies that will come to our center and meet ladies to actually counsel them there. They don't have to go out of town to meet them. They don't have to be scared to go somewhere they don't know. They can actually come to us, the people that's already been loving on them, and we connect them with the adoption agencies so that they can begin that process. Um, we've had three in the past six months. I think we've had three ladies who were abortion-minded who um, actually, after coming to us, decided to parent their child through delivery and then give to a family that was that was awaiting their arrival through adoption. Um, one of those was actually in Lawrenceville at Planned Parenthood on the table to have the procedure, to have the abortion. This is their story. I wasn't there, so I can't tell it exactly, but he looked at her, she looked at him and said, we're supposed to go back to Tacoa. They got up, got in their car, drove back to Tacoa, um, began to work with us. We done an ultrasound, showed them the baby. And um, that baby was adopted into a, a wonderful family in Arlington, Texas. Uh, my wife was actually at the hospital when the baby was born and got to sign off on the, the witnessing signature for the adoption. And they were that close, like she was literally about to have the procedure when the Lord shook them. And I just thank God that we were there for them to come to, you know. Um, I'm going to give you some questions. i got to try to move on because what the Lord beat me up about talking to you guys about I need to get to. Um, questions that are frequently asked what does it cost to come to the cold life we don't charge anyone for anything our ultrasounds don't cost our pregnancy tests don't cost um, marriage uh, coaching any family life stuff whatever we do um, there's no handouts at the cold life we don't give anything away for free we have a mommy store that 
that has, um, and I'll explain that, I know it's contradictory, but um, we have a mommy store that has everything you can imagine, diapers, wipes, clothes, car seats, <coughs> cribs, and the ladies and families take lessons. They're about 25 minutes, and they earn what's called baby bucks. The baby bucks, from their time and those lessons, they then shop in the mommy store. So while there's not a charge, it's also not a handout. You've actually got an investment working in your life and the child's life to, to get better. Um, so that covers that. Um, and I, I went over the adoption part already. We do work with um, folks to connect them. One of the biggest questions we get, and one thing I always like to, to hit on, is um, what happens when a lady comes to our center and we show her everything and we work with her. And sometimes we spend days with an abortion-minded woman and we work with her and work with her and we stay up late at night and we, we try to catch every phone call she makes and we try to show her all the truth without badgering her or belittling her. And we listen to the reasons why. And oftentimes we hear how her mom is pushing her to have an abortion or her mate. It's very seldom her. Um, most of the time, and I have a whole uh, frustration with that. We, we speak so much about women's rights, but usually the ladies that I meet, I'm sorry, the ladies that I meet that are having an abortion is being forced to by a man. So wrap your mind around that for a little while and think about it. While it's, it's supposed to be about the woman's choice, there's usually a man that don't want to take care of what he's caused, and he's pushing her into situations she don't want to be in. So and that's just what I see. You know, I don't know statistics on that, but I see it constantly. But we're asked, what do we do when a woman says, you've told me all this, and I'm going to abort. There's no way I'm not carrying this child, and it's going to mess up my plans, and the, my choice is to abort. Our decision at that point is always to love that lady. Um, very hard for me to wrap my mind around that coming into this ministry because I buried my own daughter. I had a daughter that died, and um, it's hard as a dad who lost his child to wrap your mind around someone taking their life of their own. But you got to realize everybody's situation is different. You don't know what they're dealing with, and you don't know what they're afraid of, and you don't know how scared they are. So the last thing a woman hears that tells us that she is going to abort is that we love her, we care about her, and we'll always be there for her. We realize that there's two souls in that equation. One's the baby, whom we know where it is the moment that that abortion takes place. As bad as we hate it, what took place, we know babies in heaven, right? Um, if you believe the word, absent with the body, present with the Lord. Um, so we hold on to that while we hold on to hope for the mom. Because we know time after time we've met with ladies who struggle for years. Statistically speaking, a, a, a woman who in her teen or early 20s that has an abortion is 160 times more likely to commit suicide in her lifespan than someone who does not. So the last thing we want to do, and I'm begging you guys, I know there's a lot of groups that go out to, to the abortion um, clinics and stuff and do, do awesome things. You hold up signs and tell them how much you love them. Please, please, please love these ladies. Love these ladies. Do not belittle them. Um, love them. Jesus told us the greatest is love. We can love them back to the cross or we can push them further away. And I hear so many, even the lady that came to us um, from Planned Parenthood said that she was, as she was going back to her car to come back to us, there were people holding signs up on the sidewalk that was yelling profanities at her, telling her how disgusting she was. And she was the only lady I've ever met that legitimately had a medical reason. The doctor met with us, and she, there was a possibility of her dying. That's very, very slim. That's thrown out there a lot. Very, very slim. This lady's was legitimate, and she was being yelled at from the sidewalk from people claiming to be Christians, telling her how sorry she was. That's, that's not the way that we need to fight this battle. Um, guys, we really need to love and understand that some people that you see that you look down on got caught in something you didn't get caught in. They got caught in something I didn't get caught in. So while we spend so much time trying to be um, holier than thou and telling them what they should do, we need to try to figure out the vantage point they're coming from and meet them where they are and then love them to Christ. And that's with any ministry that you work in. I've worked in jail ministry. I've worked with teens. I've worked in several different arenas um, in ministry. And regardless 
always, always, always take a love approach. Um, don't be haughty. Don't act like you know better and you've been where they're at because you haven't. And so I've, I've found that with all the things I don't know, the Lord's gave me the ability to realize I don't know and I need love. And love will usually make up the difference for what you don't know. So, um, To the guys for a little bit, if I can beat up on y'all. And I know y'all may have trouble hearing me because I speak with like this. <coughs> I have a hillbilly with a Tacoan dialect is, is the language I use. So it may be tough for y'all, but just do what you can. Try to figure it out. Um, I was going to have a translator, but he couldn't understand me either. So. <laughs> um, okay. So to the guys, I want to challenge you. Um, I believe, and I, I see daily at Tacoa Life, I see ladies come in pregnant, 13, 14 years old. I meet with the guys who are the father of their children. I talk to them. Typically when I ask them what kind of relationship you have with your parents, the relationship with mom is okay, she's there, but whatever. Well, what you, what's this going on with your dad? The two answers I get almost constantly is I don't know him or I hate him. One of the two. He's not in my life. I don't know him or I hate him. It breaks my heart. I see it over and over again. I see little girls who are running to guys to get affirmation that dad should have been given, but he wasn't, give, he wasn't there to give it, and now she's running to whoever will give it with his own agenda of getting what he wants. And it is almost 100% of the time that's the answer about how's your relationship with your dad. It breaks my heart. Um, I'll give you some statistics on that, on that level. So in challenging you guys to not be that man one day in your life. It's impossible to know the depth of the financial and emotional impact that fatherlessness has had on our country. There's 25 million U.S. children who grow up homeless. Out of them, 80% um, are fatherless. 41% of them will grow up poorer than their biological father who left them. So just financially, there's a huge divide. 70 to 80% of prisoners come from fatherless homes. 71% of high school dropouts come from fatherless homes. 85% of children diagnosed with behavioral disorders come from fatherless homes. And a staggering statistic that should rattle all of you and, and make you really think about things is between 74 and 80% of all violent rapes, this is not considering date rapes, which they don't consider violent, which is a whole other thing that gets me aggravated, but 74 to 80% of violent rapes are committed by men from fatherless homes. So when a dad's not present, you leave a lot of baggage, you leave a lot of pain, and you create this cycle that spills out into the world. Most of the teen pregnancies that we see are third or fourth generation teen pregnancies now. We're trying desperately to break that and change that. Um, so to the men, I want to challenge you. On behalf of your assigned gender, I'm here to tell you to, to please realize that God made you a certain way. He chose to create you as a man, and I'm asking you to please be responsible for that. Um, with your manhood, you can produce children and, and cause much joy in your life, or you can leave a trail of devastation that's already wrecking our nation. Um, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible to see... Um, discontinue in our society. I want to tell you it doesn't only continue in Tacoa. Um, we work with many schools. Um, I've had many, many ladies in my office that were students at TFC. I've had many that were students at Piedmont. I've had many that were students at Emmanuel. I've walked beside ladies, went to the hospital with them when their babies were born, when their parents wouldn't show up because they become pregnant at a college, one of which was here at TFC, their parents, in the moment that they could have been the most godly and wrapped their hands around this child and loved on them, <coughs> pulled their funding, left them homeless in Tacoa. The family was from an entire different state. We had to work to get her in housing, to buy her a washer and dryer, to put her up and make sure her baby was okay. It's not always out there. It, it's, um, it's very important, guys, that as we're 
on this journey to be um, ministers or nurses or psychologists or whatever you're doing, you realize your number one call is to honor God in this life. To be humble, to be righteous, and be righteous in your dating. Be righteous when you're at the back door, when you're in the back seat, when you're in the back alley. Be righteous. Um, we're, we're creating a society that is destroying itself over and over again because we've got men that are walking out constantly. They're walking out. Um, I see my buddy that was there volunteering the other day, and I, it just touches me that guys come and even volunteer at the center because I can't even get guys to listen. A lot of you wouldn't listen if you, hey, if, you if your parents weren't going to get fined for you being in not being in chapel. Um, I couldn't get some of you to listen, but please hear me out. The biggest problem in our society is not drugs, alcohol, or teen sex. It's absent fathers. It's men not being what they need to be. And they're starting something that is a domino effect. It leads to all this other stuff. So please, walk holy, walk righteous. Um, to the young ladies, I want to say, um, please, please choose wisely. Um, this is the stuff that I set up last night. I tried to sleep, and none of this was going to be here today. And the Lord kept waking me up. I was up at 2. I was up at 3. Finally, my wife said, just go away. I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> and so I end, up, I end up in the kitchen. And at 5 o'clock this morning, I'm praying. And I'm, I'm in tears because I realized that the weight of... Um, I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said that there's somebody in this room today that is sitting beside someone that thinks this is hilarious. And they're the very person that's trying to get them to compromise. And that compromise will forever change their life. Not ruin your life. Because God can put it all back together. If God can have me standing here, He can put any mistake you've made back together. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a mess. I was a recovering alcoholic. I'm only in Tacoa. This is cool. I'm only in Tacoa because my family was running from the federal government for tax evasion when I was a child. So, you know, if I can stand here and talk to y'all, He can put some stuff back together. But the truth is, the Lord spoke to me and said... There's two things happening. There's people sitting in that chapel that's sitting beside someone that's trying to make them compromise and will put them on the path to be at to go alive. Or there's people getting ready to go home to Christmas break and are already talking to the people that they've compromised with before and will compromise well again and will be coming back to, T to TFC pregnant or having father a child. Because it's, it's not that you're bad people. It's that you're people. And we're all people. And I'm challenging you to, to really walk worthy of the fact that Jesus died on the cross for us. And to live holy. And as I look out here and I see you guys that are going to go all over the world and all over the country and make a difference for the gospel and share Jesus' love. Like I said, he can put it back together if you derail it. But you've lost all that time between the derailment and him putting it back together. And you don't get that part in the middle back. Like, God can restore things, but whatever you've done here, you'll never get back to. Because He'll restore you and bring you back over here where you should be, but you've lost all that time in the middle. And what I'm asking you to do is not compromise so you'll lose that time in the middle. To stay on the path and, and walk um, in God's promises. Let me share some scripture with you, and I'll try to uh, wrap it up. I don't know where I'm at. I digressed a bit. So, um, and two other things that I, I felt like I wanted to share with you, um, since we covered abortion and abstinence and addiction and um, all that good stuff, let's talk about um, as you go into ministry, whether it's a ministry like Tacoa Life, I had no idea that we would ever be there. Tacoa Life is, is an awesome thing, was not on our radar. Um, we had a homeless shelter for a few years. I was a contractor, had been in business for 26, and I was miserable for 26, and um, the, the Lord was uh, leading us in another direction, I hoped, for 26 years, and it was really slow progressing. So, um, but when he, when he led us there, there's some things that I be, begin to see and I begin to learn. I begin to study, and um, I realize that just like at this school, you can gain knowledge, but wisdom comes from the Lord. So please don't ever get haughty in the knowledge you've gained here. It's a wonderful gift, and it's a tool. But if you don't walk hand in hand with Jesus every day to abide in his wisdom and let him pour it into you, the knowledge you gain here can be the very thing to destroy you. Because knowledge will get you a job, but lack of wisdom will cause you to lose a career. 
Knowledge will give you, um, can give you pride, but the lack of humility can destroy your witness because no one wants to hear what you have to say. So be very, very careful as you go into ministry. Um, a lot of times we have people come to volunteer to go alive and, and you'll ask them, like, how can you help us? And they'll say, well, just show us whatever you do and we'll just make it better. Because we've got a degree and basically that's what we learned was how to make processes better. Well, that's okay, but when that's packed full of pride and you haven't even looked at what we were doing to start with, it may not need to be better. You know, God may have gave us this, and it may need to be better. But my point is, don't walk out into, you said 1050, right? Okay, I've got a few more minutes. Um, don't walk into ministry thinking because you've been to a wonderful school with wonderful professors and, and a great support system around you that you have all the answers. Um, it's much like when I run a construction business, you can buy very, very nice tools and put them into the hands of people that don't know how to use them and they become weapons of destruction. So just be real careful um, that you walk hand in hand with the Lord. Um, and I know that being, uh, being that it is a Bible school and so many other things going here that's great, you probably think quoting some Proverbs is is awful simple-minded, and, and I am awful simple-minded, but I would challenge you to spend time on the simple things because um, as complex as a walk, a walk is with the Lord, the most beautiful part of that is keeping it simple and, and not doing things that compromise things you said you would never do or things you wanted to do and clutter your life with so much chaos that you can no longer sit at the feet of Jesus and just soak in His goodness. And so as you walk the halls of this, this college and as you stand at the falls and look at how beautiful it is and think about all that God's created, please challenge yourself daily to keep it simple with His truth. Go to things like Proverbs and study, you know, meditate on one line a day and say, this is how I'm going to try to be better. I'm going to try to simply be pure in a world that's not. Be as good as I can and love the Lord deeply and, and walk in His presence. Um, Last thing that I, I want to talk to you about, and I see this constantly at the co life, and I want to share it with you so you don't end up there. A couple of things. One, if you do end up there, I won't think any less of you and love you any less. I'll, I'll be there for you and welcome you with open arms. I would rather you not, unless it's to volunteer, but if something happens and you need me, we'll always be there. So, so please don't ever think since I'm here speaking that I would look at you any different. Um, but Proverbs 25, 28 says, Like a city whose walls are broken through, is a person who lacks self-control. The greatest thing that I found out in my life that helped me get to the place of ministry that I'm at is to not give up and to not operate in, in a lack of self-control. Indulgences, um, what you think may be okay, um, be careful. Because when you compromise in one area, um, you came to school where none of your family's at, right? So all the things that you've been taught that you shouldn't do, now a lot of people here do and approve. But maybe for you, you need to stay away from it. And you need to protect that and you need to, to the thing about the, the walls being torn down in the city is that it's not just that they're open for attack, it's that people are already inside the city pillaging and stealing everything. So as soon as you compromise the walls of your life and the walls of your education and the walls of your city, you are at that point open for Satan to still kill and destroy your hopes, your dreams, and the plans you have for your future. And mess with the plans that God has for your future. Right? He can bring you back to it. But remember, it's a journey to get back to it. And you lose that time in the middle while you're trying to get back. So, It's 1041. I think I'm going to close and try to get out back in enough time that if any of you want to talk to me on the way out or throw things at me or boyfriends are mad because I've told your girlfriend that you might be a bad choice. Um, whatever we can, we can talk about that out there. Okay. I've got two beautiful daughters, and I'm a pretty big guy, so we'll we'll talk as long as you want to. Okay. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to stand before what I believe is the future, the hope of tribes and nations. God, what a blessing! Beautiful young faces with so much potential. Lord, I pray you protect them. You protect them. Protect their integrity protect their heart, and Lord, they're all at their core broken humans just like the rest of us, like I am, God. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for having them here. Lord, the ones that aren't saved, I pray they would get hungry to know you. Lord, the ones that's been compromising, I pray you would put
put it in their heart to stop. Uh, God, I pray you would protect them, grow them, and Lord, as they leave this campus to go wherever they go, Lord, I pray they walk worthy. I pray they serve you, not a professor. They serve you, not a grandma who's paying tuition. They serve you, not anybody else. So that when they're alone and nobody's around, the one that they're serving and living for is still with them. I pray you bless them, cover them, guide them. And Lord, if, if so, um, and they want to be a part of the cool life, I pray you send them there. And we get to know each other more and, and do more things together. Um, God bless them and keep them. In Jesus' name, amen.